Imagine building a more successful hypnosis business just in the next 10 days. To learn how, please visit WorkSmartHypnosis.com and take the 10-Day Hypnosis Business Challenge. Yours free today. Welcome to the Work Smart Hypnosis Podcast with Jason Lynette, your professional resource for hypnosis training and outstanding business success. Here's your host, Jason Lynette. Part of me is really excited to share this interview with you today. Well, okay, no, not just one part. All parts of me are working together in harmony, integrated towards the goal of being excited about this interview to share with you today. That is way too much introduction. Jason Lynette here, Work Smart Hypnosis, session number 10, an interview with Roy Hunter. I'm really excited to share this interview with you as... I just previously said uh, a couple of weeks back, I was out in Las Vegas for Hypno Thoughts Live 2014. Had a fantastic time there, presented a workshop, got to finally meet a lot of people face to face that, you know, we're all perhaps on Facebook and interacting and the chance to actually just sit down and talk and just had a wonderful time out there. While I was there, of course, brought along the recording equipment and did a couple of interviews for this series here today. And uh, the first one here, session number 10 for the podcast, again, is an interview with Roy Hunter. Uh, actually, dating things back, um, I've known Roy for a couple of years now and actually brought him out to my office in Alexandria, Virginia uh, for four days of tra actually five days of training by the time we scheduled everything, age regression, parts therapy, and just had a great time with a nice big group out there as well. If you ever get a chance, definitely, definitely train with Roy Hunter. Again, wonderful information and different, uh, a definite voice in the profession as well. Uh, some wonderful, gr great books as well. I actually provide his books, Art of Hypnosis and Art of Hypnotherapy for my students that I train. Um, I'm very comfortable in sharing here that these are books that I only read about maybe five, six years ago. And as soon as I read them, my thought was, if I had these when I first got started, I would just be much better off. So for that reason, I supplement the class directly with Roy's books. Uh, specifically, though, let's chat for a quick moment uh, about parts therapy, which parts therapy is an interesting category of work where there's a lot of different styles that are out there and specifically the style that Roy learned from his mentor, Charles Tebbets, which then translated into the book Hypnosis for Inner Conflict Resolution, introducing parts therapy available from Crown House Publishing. What's just a small part of that book is actually uh, part of a bigger project that you're going to hear about in this interview today, specifically spiritual applications of parts therapy. Back uh, when I hosted Roy for the class here at my office, uh, September, October last year, it was interesting that uh, he offers to the group a demonstration of either parts therapy or what he likes to call spirit trek, which again is that spiritual application of parts therapy. And uh, every time I've seen him give that offer, uh, at least from my experience, the group has always wanted to see spirit trek. And it's just a process of doing a parts therapy session, but also drawing out that part of the client, the most closely associated with their perception of a higher power. And it just becomes an interesting way to navigate through the process and help to affect changes. And specifically in this interview, you'll hear the origin of that as well. It's a brief interview. We were literally in the hallway of the Orleans Hotel recording this interview. So here we go, Roy Hunter. I'm very excited about this project because I actually discovered this uh, aspect of hypnotherapy by accident way back in the mid-1980s. I was working with a lady doing parts therapy, uh, talking to that part of her that wanted to continue overeating and talking with that part of her that wanted to uh, be at her ideal weight. And the parts would not come to terms of agreement and they argued so vehemently that they intimidated the other parts into silence. And when I was unable to call out a third part, I remembered that she mentioned being a Christian in the intake. So 
I called out the uh, part of her that was most closely connected to God or Christ or uh, the Holy Spirit. And the part came out, called itself Holy Spirit, and brought resolution within five minutes. Mm -hmm. So quite by accident, I discovered what uh, back then I called spiritual parts therapy, and now I call spirit trick. And what I found interesting the first time I, I learned this system from you is that it's also now an application in which to be fair, we don't really have to know the religious beliefs of that client, that they'll begin to sort themselves into whatever categories and whatever that higher power would be, correct? That's correct. But I don't try either directly or indirectly to shape the client to my uh, spiritual beliefs because I do not believe that's ethical. I don't have a right to interfere with somebody else's belief system. but. If I know that the client believes in God or a higher power, then I will ask that part of the subconscious most closely connected to the client's perception of God or higher power to come forward and provide some words of divine wisdom. Mm -hmm. So it's again getting into that client-centered model of rather than us, I forget where it was, there was a news story years ago about a hypnotist, and this could have been any other profession, but in this situation, it was a hypnotist who was getting into a bit of trouble because she was bringing a lot of themes of religion into her work, yet meanwhile, that was not part of the agreement with the parents. So in this approach, it's fitting into their model of the world and letting them process for themselves in the way that's the most appropriate for them. I believe it has to be client-centered uh, or also spirit-centered. Mm -hmm. So I have facilitated this kind of session for Christians, for Jewish people, for New Age people, uh, for uh, people of Eastern religion, and uh, in cases where some people believed in God or a higher power but were not affiliated with any religion whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So if the client believes in God or a higher power, they have to go deep, really deep in hypnosis in order to minimize the risk of conscious interference with the information that comes through and set aside preconceived opinions about what they think the higher power part will disclose to them. But some clients have had life-changing breakthroughs as a result of uh, the Spirit Trek format. So uh, for years and years I have wanted to write something about it, although I have one chapter on this topic in uh, the hardbound uh, book Hypnosis for Inner Conflict Resolution, Introducing Parts Therapy. I wasn't satisfied with that being uh, sufficient. And yet, even though I wanted to have over a hundred sessions to summarize and provide some hope for people that there is more than just the here and now, uh, it seemed like uh, a very complex project in light of all of the other uh, projects and challenges that I've had both professionally and personally. Then uh, some months back, uh, a lady suggested that I use several different authors. So I have uh, the privilege of having some highly respected hypnotherapists from around the globe who have uh, agreed to be contributing authors for this book. A uh, lady from South Africa, Claudia Klein, who's perhaps the leading hypnotherapy trainer in the entire country, is one of our authors. Uh, Bruni Bruin, uh, past president of the Australian Hypnotherapist Association from Australia, uh, has agreed to be one of the contributing authors. Dr. Bruce Eimer, a clinical psychologist who co-authored The Art of Hypnotic Regression Therapy with me, has agreed to be one of the contributing authors. Uh, there's a gentleman from Europe, Eugene Popa, who's a hypnosis trainer over in Europe. He's agreed to be one of our contributing Thanks. authors. Uh, Patty Scott, who's a hypnosis trainer in Florida, and her uh, business partner, uh, Dr. Uh, Eric Rosen, uh, who's a family psychologist. He has agreed to be a contributing author. So I am uh, delighted. A trend that we're starting to see more of, too, of these books that are becoming collaborations rather than just rather than just one voice the entire way through. Let's, let's pick a theme and begin to get the different flavors, the different styles, the different approaches, and even the thinking. And it lets the reader then kind of pick a little bit from each chapter the elements that are effective for them. That's true. And I uh, 
firmly believe, even though uh, a number of my books have been used in hypnosis schools around the world, I firmly believe that the art of hypnotic regression therapy is better as a co-authored book than if I had written it by myself, because while I bring in um, experience dating back to 1983 with the use of client-centered regression therapy, uh, Bruce Eimer brings in his experience as a clinical psychologist to add uh, more depth to uh, the regression book. And together, I think we have produced something that builds a bridge between psychology and hypnotherapy. And both of us are very pleased with it, and the book has gotten high reviews from hypnotherapists and psychologists from around the globe. I want to go back for a moment to the topic of spiritual applications of specifically parts therapy and spirit trek, which is a wonderful process. I'm curious about the thinking and the logic behind a specific moment, where often in parts therapy and regression therapy, my paraphrase of it sometimes becomes that we're getting into an amazing scenario where the client's in the right position to do direct suggestion and hypnosis on themselves. We're getting into the right scenario where they can provide the insight, where they can provide the understanding. In Spirit Trek, there's a moment where it becomes more of an internal experience to allow that to become received, to allow that message to take place. And I'm just curious, the, the history or the thinking, the logic behind, rather than that being a vocalized moment, which it very well could be, the thinking behind letting that become more of a quiet moment, how you would discern from one style to the other. This we ask may, the easy questions. Okay. Yes. This may <laughs> sound somewhat strange because a lot of my work, especially with Spirit Trek, is done more intuitively uh, rather than uh, making cognitive decisions in that I do my best to tune in to what seems to be most appropriate for the client, although I very strongly do my best to avoid inappropriate leading or preconceived opinions, so I ask open-ended questions. But in advance of the trance, if it's predetermined that spirit trek is going to be used, the client tells me what question he or she wishes to ask uh, their higher power. So once I confirm through idiomotor response that the client is deep enough to move into that phase of the session, I then ask the client to choose between a sacred place or a peaceful place, and then I call out that part that is most closely connected to God or your perception of higher power. And when permission is granted to speak or communicate, please move the yes finger. And when the yes finger moves, then I say, is two-way verbal communication permitted? Because occasionally the client receives the information in his or her own mind without verbalizing it to me. When two-way permission is acceptable, then I ask, what name or title shall I call you? And uh, it's been amazing the names over the years that have emerged. Uh, oftentimes the name might be um, Higher Self, uh, Divine Light, Divine Wisdom, God, Yahweh, I Am Who I Am. I am he, she, they with many names but with no name and have been called many names throughout the eons, but for purposes of this session you can simply call me I am. Wow. <laughs> I've heard that more than once through the years. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, I am the Christ, sometimes Holy Spirit, sometimes Universal Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes a name that sounds like uh, an American Indian name saying, I'm uh, so-and-so's spirit guide. Mm -hmm. So uh, occasionally Michael the Archangel. And I uh, follow Charles Tevis' advice to deal with what emerges, and I address that part the way that part wishes me to address it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Well, Roy, thanks for your time. You're welcome. My honor. Thanks for listening to the Work Smart Hypnosis podcast at WorkSmartHypnosis.com. Hey there, it's Jason, and I want you to be one of the first to find out as we upload amazing new content. So do this right now. Click the subscribe button right here on this video. That's going to link you to our YouTube channel here, and you will be the first to find out as new resources and downloads are made available. Do it now.